Hey, I got this CXU613 Mac Pinnacle behind me. It's a 2016 and fuel mileage has fallen off badly. The power has fallen off badly. And that's one of the first signs of a charge air cooler leak. And this one's got it bad. So I'm gonna replace the charge air cooler in this thing today and uh, stick around. I'm gonna show you how I do it. If you like this kind of video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. Check out some of my other videos. Help you, do, help you uh, learn how to do some simple things on your truck and save a bunch of money. This one will save you, figure, $500 to $1,000 in labor, you might save yourself. All right, so I got the hood supported here. And uh, next thing we're gonna do is uh, take this black shroud off here, this uh, floppy back. It's gonna take uh, three bolts on each side over there. And then we're going to loosen up our condenser here. Uh, we got Torx head, two on each side. And then we're going to just flop it out of the way. We got some soft hoses over here for the pivot area. And we're going to be really careful and not damage that. We're going to tie it real nice into place. Uh, and then that'll give us access to start working on the charge air cooler. Right here the condenser is loosened up. There's, a, there's, like I said, two bolts on either side. They are Torx head. And this is actually a good resting place for this right here. Kind of have it resting in the hood. It's nice and secure. It's not poking up against the fins. So we're gonna punch a hole in it or anything. We should have plenty of room to get the charge air out. Now, discovered that this, this black rubber here uh, can wait until we get the charge air cooler out. It'll be easier to swap it once it's out of there than being in a tight spot. So next, I'm gonna take uh, loosen the clamps, pull the hoses on each side, and then uh, we'll be about ready to uh, Pull the bolts out so this is a little different than the charger on my freight liner there's only bolts in the top there's two over here two on the other side and then on the bottom here it like hooks into a mount it doesn't uh it doesn't really have a bolt hole it's more like a hook and then a bolt goes through that hook so i'll show you that on the new one when we get that far but uh it's kind of tight down in here so I imagine that that's going to be kind of a pain to loosen that up, but we'll get that and uh, we'll come back and show you here when we get her out of here. Little tip here, when you remove these charge air boots here, uh, put something over them to cover them. Uh, put some plastic bag or something. You don't want a bunch of dirt getting in there that's going to go right into your intake. And I have, I have her loosened up down there and took one bolt out on each side, the other one I got loose. The next step is I'm going to have my partner here help me. We're going to take these last two bolts out and lift this thing. It's going to have to go forward and then up. Some trucks you got to you got to take it and rotate it and then forward and up. Uh, it's going to be this can kind of be a pain because you're working in a a spot here. Uh, it's a little tight and this truck actually doesn't look too bad compared to some of the freight liners I've done. There's a lot more room to work. But uh, at this point, it's just pull her off, pull her up and out of here. And be careful, if you don't have an overhead lift or something, uh, be careful not to drop it on any of your components here or start banging, especially watch your condenser here so you don't damage that. All right, so I mentioned that uh, this thing had a massive air leak. Didn't even, no need to pressure test it. No need at all. And here's right where it is. This is the back side of the radiator or the charge air that faces the radiator. See this tube is split wide open. You see that there? It's a failure of that whole tube. And now it's a massively, you could hear it, you could feel it with your hand. It's also cracked on the other side, the front side facing away from the radiator. So getting replaced. And like I said, easier to strip this black plastic and remount it to the new one while it's out of the truck. And while we have that out, let's talk about a couple other maintenance items here we're gonna do while it's out. So, up in here, condenser sitting right there. We're gonna clean it up real nice. It's summertime, it's hot. It'd be nice to have a clean condenser. While it's out, we can get at the back side of it and wash it. Look at how nasty, dirty this radiator is full of bugs. We're gonna wash the hell out of this thing. And I don't know if you can see it real well. It's hard to get in here with the camera. Down at the bottom there, there's a big old ding in it. We need to check that, make sure it's not leaking. I don't think it is, but it's, it lines up 
right with where the ding was in the charge air cooler. It just about lines up, not quite, but it's not leaking. So now's a good time to do any kind of cleaning or maintenance. We'll clean this, we'll clean this bug screen on the grill and uh, let it all dry and get it all pretty before we put it back together. See all the gunk built up in your radiator here? It's hard to get at these spots with the charge air cooler in. So now's the time. We're gonna take the time to do it. This is what I'm using here to clean this radiator. This is a radiator genie. If you look, the end is tapered. So it comes, you can get between the radiator and the charge air and the condenser and the fan, and then it's adjustable here. She'll actually put out a lot of pressure or you can tone it back here. I'll put a link in the description below this video where you can get one of these. I had a whole video on using it and it also comes with an air powered one too with a fitting on the end for an air gun and uh, or an air hose. But uh, you're going to see how clean we're getting this radiator just with some uh, degreaser, some mild degreaser, nothing harsh, and this. So we'll show you that when we're done. All right, here's our new charge air cooler. We I went and transferred this black shroud over from the old one. Just got to take these bolts out here. And then there's this metal bracket here that holds a temperature sensor. Uh, we popped that loose before we pulled it off the truck and just laid it in the hood. And then uh, there's some pegs that go in these little holes here to secure the, the line. Broke that one off. I'll just zip tie it on. But uh, this is what your new charge air looks like. You're not going to find them. They're going to have little dings in the fins when you buy them. They all do. Uh, just from handling them and so forth. This is not a Duralite. If you can get your hands on a Duralite charge air cooler, those are really good. But due to the situation with parts and stuff, we got this OEM one for $768, which is actually a really good deal. That's with my discount at the Mac dealer. I think uh, full retail on it was like $12 in change uh so we got this one because this is what they had uh, and we needed one right away the only thing we don't like is on the other side some of these welds i mean it, it's it's kind of a crappy weld job but as long as it doesn't leak it does have a warranty with it so we're gonna we're ready we're gonna put this back in the truck but let me just show you how we came out here with cleaning the doggone radiator it's looking pretty good here the condenser's nice and clean. If you look at this radiator, she's nice and clean now. Before it was brown and dingy. Look on the ground here. All the uh, all the crap that came out of that thing. Uh, besides all the bugs, there's a whole bunch in the gravel there. You want to do this, even if you know a couple times a year, wash out your radiator, condenser, charge air, because uh, it help your your truck run cooler and even more efficiently. Help keep your air conditioning working better because you can pull air through everything so uh we're ready to slide this back in what we're going to do is from the other side lift it over the top and set it down in first we're going to set it on these little pivots down in here those uh where those hooks are going to rest on and then we'll bolt her in up there and start assembling things in reverse order uh pretty much the opposite of how we took it apart and if i encounter any problems along the way be sure to show them but uh, this one came off pretty easy didn't have to finagle at all it was just out a little bit I had to tip the, the front and then up it came out real nice so i'm gonna have my helper help me lift this baby back in here new charge air cooler is back in folks and condensers put on everything is as it should be and this was a as far as doing this goes everything went really well uh, put the hood springs back on of course. I never really fully released the hood because we had all kinds of room to work Just needed them springs out of the way and uh, Don't forget your little brackets here for the AC lines and It's worth noting when you're putting that condenser back in uh, It's gonna be a little tight be careful not to run the back of the condenser against the bolts that are sticking out of the charge air cooler for these flappers here and uh, Other than that not too bad took uh I don't know, like three hours. I'm moving a little slow today, kind of tired, but uh, it's done. And if you like these kind of videos, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe. We'll see you next time.